Welcome to the internet. Have a look around. Anything that brain of yours can think of can be found. We've got mountains of content. Some better, some worse. If none of it's of interest to you, you'd be the first. All artists must seek permission to post a cover song not in the public domain on their YouTube channel. The artist must define all intended uses and compare them with the exclusive rights of the copyright in order to ensure that the song is being used legally. Attempting to make contact with the rights holder does not mean legal permission is automatically granted. If an artist or content creator chooses to ignore copyright laws set forth by YouTube and the US Copyright Office, there may be several consequences, such as demonetization, muting the video, or blocking the video, preventing it from being seen. And considering how YouTube handles copyright, that may also lead to people being taken off platform for doing it one too many times. It is important to note that placing a disclaimer in the YouTube's video description is not a replacement for obtaining proper permission to utilize a song. However, what an artist instead can do to avoid copyright claims on their YouTube videos is use your original songs and content. Using your own songs, original music, or royalty-free music is the only way to ensure that the original artist does not obtain copyright strikes on their channel. You can use royalty-free music as a backdrop to your own lyrics and video content. Fair use laws do not apply to cover songs. Although an artist's very own version of a song may be different from the original track, it does not mean that the song can be used in a YouTube video without proper permission. If your YouTube channel has problems using a cover song, there is an official process to resolve a copyright claim. Now in some way, shape, or form, what I just read off there applies to the three videos of covers of Bo Burnham's Welcome to the Internet, each done in their own rendition of some manner. The people who've covered this song applied their own talents, either in vocals, adjusting the lyrics, or making a different rendition of the original song. And for my full honest opinion, they in their own ways are well done and each carry their own charm and flair to them. However, more and more recently, I've begun to see this trend of artificial intelligence being developed to the point where it can artificially generate people's voices on the internet. Now, in some cases in the past, this has been harmless. Let me talk! I can't explain myself with you fucking idiots interrupting me! What the hell? You're an idiot! Yeah, yeah I'm Becca's fuck. If you are a human, I'll let you sit on me! That's how thick you are! What? Wait, maybe all your definitions mixed up. Why would you want that? It's a human thing, right? How the fuck is that possible? GG easy. This is unbelievable. I want a recount of those results. Cope, Joe's Steve fucking Moe, ass was hacking with Game Shark. I can smell it from a mile away. Care, Donald, what the fuck are you talking about? I'll make an exposed video. Don't fucking test me. Expose me for what? Being horny. However, that I cannot say is the same for AI covers. Now, some people might be asking, what's wrong with AI covers? They're using fictional characters and some content creators for a sort of what-if scenario and posting it on YouTube where they can get popular off of using AI to generate said people and characters' voices and even start making a living. Well, that. That, that, that's the problem. And look, I get it for some people. This is just something fun and just silly, but even then, the people who are being involved in this not all of them exactly see it the same way. Someone made an AI cover of Iron Mouse and C.VA seeing somebody that I used to know, to which Iron Mouse herself saw and responded to. I don't, I don't know. I don't really feel comfortable with somebody doing like AI music with my voice. Like for the text to speech and shit. Okay, I, I consented to having my voice on text to speech, but it's like. Somebody straight up like making a song with my voice without asking me. This is like, if you want me to sing the song, just ask me. <laughs> you know? And then people, people are like posting them on YouTube and it's like their own like cover, but it's me and it's not me. It's so fucking weird. Yeah, it's like you could have just, you could have asked me. You could have asked me, been like, hey, mouse, uh, can I do like an AI song with your voice? It's so hard to say if it's identity theft or not, because like, it's not me. It just sounds like me. But then again, it sounds so much like me. Is it me? It's a gray area right now. The whole AI thing, it's so, it's such a new problem. It's a new solution with sets of problems 
a multiple set of problems. There's so many issues, especially with like people using them to sing as somebody else or like creating like visual stuff as somebody else. It's kind of scary because it's like, what else are they gonna, what else are they gonna make me sing and say and do? Okay, so the problem with AR covers, in my opinion, is that even if the people involved are doing it for fun, they're releasing it publicly on a platform that promotes and encourages attention through entertainment. And a good way to shoot yourself in the foot like that is doing shit that can become a legal issue. And I know the response I'll most likely get is, we're just having some fun, and look, I get it, it's fine to have fun, it's fine to bend the rules once in a while or so, but only as long as it doesn't go too far. Like, making a video with a copyrighted character or artist being artificially generated to perform a cover and passing it off as them without the creators or the people involved's knowledge or consent. Okay, so basically I feel like now is a good time I should address the elephant in the room. So, some time ago as of this recording, the actress Erica Lindbeck, who plays the character of Tapa Sakura for the hit JRPG Persona 5, came across a AI cover someone had made of the character she plays singing Welcome to the Internet by Bo Burnham. Now, ultimately, as far as I can tell, looking into it, she had requested very politely for it to be taken down, and the uploader complied, ultimately not wanting to make any trouble for her or anything. Which, you know, in the grand scheme of things, this is the best case scenario, and it makes a lot of sense. I mean, Erika Limbeck doesn't own the character Futaba Sakura. That's a character she plays. Futaba Sakura, the character, is owned by Atlas and by extension Sega. And admittingly, I did try to contact Erica Limbeck to get her side of the story to ultimately shed more light into what I wouldn't have to hypothesize or guess about, but th that was a no-go, so ultimately I do have to hypothesize and guess. Um, and mainly I guess for a few reasons in particular about why she did this is, well one, I mean I doubt she was actually asked for consent for her voice to be artificially generated for this. Uh, two, if it was something that, you know, she could have done, it probably would have been something that she would have uploaded herself with her doing the actual song or something like that. But aside from that, ultimately I think another major issue that I don't really think a lot of people who were pissed off at this took into consideration is that it could have been likely due to this that Atlas and Atlas West and the people associated with Persona and Persona 5 would have come across this and mistakenly thought that Erica Lindbeck did this herself without their knowledge or consent and as such they might have had a major issue with this to the point where they may have considered firing her and taking away her role as Futaba Sakura and replacing her for future titles associated with the Persona 5 iteration. It's also very likely that Atlas could have cracked down on the original uploader and have the video be taken down or given them a strike due to copyright infringement. Or I guess essentially unapproved usage of characters that are owned by businesses or companies. Which, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's copyright infringement. So yeah, ultimately if I had to hazard a guess, ultimately it could go down one of two routes, either Erica Lindbeck was uncomfortable with her voice being artificially generated, that is a very likely possibility and she's absolutely in her right to think that. Another option would be ultimately she, if I had to hazard a guess again, she didn't want to lose her job. So yeah, again, I, I don't blame her for requesting it being taken down. I don't know the full story to which uh, Erica Limbeck, if you are listening to this, I would love for you to contact me and so that I can get more so the full story. If not, I understand, but it's just like I would love to get more full context instead of trying to hypothesize everything here. But I hope people can understand from this video that the people involved with this original video, I am not trying to attack or demonize or antagonize. This was very much from my perspective something that was done for fun and ultimately it was something that had to be taken down because it might have ended poorly for the actress in question. Now I'm not saying that AI voices are 100% harmful, but in the past when it was done there usually was some level of originality to it and it was, for all accounts, done for jokes. But 
Yeah, this has become a matter that needs to be regulated properly, otherwise it'll fall into the we can replace artists and have them do whatever non-stop, who the fuck cares about what they think territory. AI already has this sort of problem with art. Now, I can tell you the biggest paranoia people involved have of this is losing jobs in the industry they work in. Now, I don't think that's gonna happen, but it'd be wrong of me to say that fear isn't out there, that doesn't exist. My guess more so for what's gonna happen is one of three things around AI voice generation depending on how it progresses. The first, apathy. Yeah, it's popular now, but who's to say that in the next two to three months from now, people will continue to watch this content rather than just not care anymore. Like, you ever notice that? Something is popular on the internet for at least two or maybe three months at best, right? And after that, people just stop giving a shit. Like, the reason I think this is mainly is to track back to one of the responses I was expecting. It was all done for fun. If the people involved don't make any money and the AI covers are done specifically for fun, I doubt it'll be too long before it becomes... Well, no different than the era of YouTube where people were posting chipmunks covers of songs. It exists and nobody really cares, at least not anymore. That's one possibility. The second is legal action. This one I do think is more viable to happen if copyright holders and companies start giving YouTube shit. Why do you think a number of groups and creators on the platforms that have made stuff like abridged parodies in the past have just stopped after some time? A major contributor to that, whether or not we think otherwise, the people who own the entertainment have considered it basically no different than piracy. Look, if the people up top don't take kindly to this, AI voice generation could end up being blocked or struck down. It's possible, and the people who own the licenses and copyrights, especially people who found out this happened without their knowledge or consent, can go ahead and take action or press charges. Now, right now, as far as I can tell from the grand scheme of things, those seem to be the only two extremes the matter lies on, for right now at least. However, there is a third option in the form of a compromise for not just AR covers, but artificial intelligence across the board. Regulating it with rules and guidelines. Basically having it be fine with permission, and while I'm not fully knowledgeable on this subject admittingly, essentially what I could imagine is something like this. 1. The use of licensed music and the use of artists or influencers being available under what is acceptable to use and to post publicly online. Number 2. Artists and influencers giving permission to the people doing it publicly online and, if necessary, having a license to do so. 3. Financial practices regarding the AI technology and or artists and influencers for doing so being prohibited. 4. Crediting the sources upon using the AI technology and or artists and influencers is required for public releases and or use of said technology and or artists and influencers. 5. Finally. The copyright holders, as well as license carriers, reserve the right to refuse the use of licensed and copyrighted works indefinitely, and artists and influencers for that matter also reserve the right to refuse their association with the use of AI technology indefinitely, regardless of prior stances. And my list of rules that I proposed aren't perfect, I imagine, and I can also imagine people more well-versed in the legal side of copyright and licensing would be able to improve it and add other stuff as well to make it a more solid list. But regardless, my point still stands, and hopefully the people who are more well-versed in this and can actually enforce stuff like this could act to make something more beneficial for everyone involved instead of just putting it all in favor of one side of the argument. And if people are mad at these rules that I've proposed, and if people don't seem to think that this is fair for them as they can't make AI covers this way, does that mean you can't simply ask for consent towards AI covers in regards to the people? Especially if the people in question you are using for these could have just, I don't know, sung it themselves or performed it themselves? Like, it's a different story if this was something that most people did privately and shared around their own circles. Like, that I get because it's not really hurting anybody and it's more private and it's more kind of an inside joke in some ways. So I get it, I understand if that was the case, but this is something that has been made public and it's something that if 
not dealt in a better way sooner rather than later, this may end up on the wrong person's radar and then...